So there's a lot of things on my mind today and yesterday. And I'm sure there will be tomorrow as well. And I, I want to share, you know, especially if it's something that God has put on my heart to share. I don't want to hold it in. I think, you know, I've often said what a sinner I am and how my need for repentance is something that I need to work on. And um, we all need to repent. And I'll tell you, I'm going to just go in prayer right now and I'm going to repent of my sins before I even begin. Loving Heavenly Father, I come to you right now. I want to have a humble heart. I want to have the right spirit. I want to have the right motives and the right reason for coming to you in prayer. I don't want to be filming or recording things just so people will watch him and say, oh, he's a good guy. No, Lord, I'm not. I'm not a good guy, but, but you are. And every day that goes by that I see life continue for me, it's just such an amazing reminder of the goodness of you, your love, your... I'm not worthy, Lord, but yet you continue to pour out blessings and I'm so thankful for my family, the love that you have given me, Lord, through my family. Thank you so much for my wife, Aviella, and Lord, you know the the pain, but also the joy that's in my heart. And every time I look at this little child, I'm reminded of you. And I'm reminded of grace. And I pause for a moment because my wife's middle name is Grace and Aviella's middle name is Grace. And there's a reason because Grace is what you gave us on the cross. And it's such a beautiful, amazing, thing and there is a feeling attached to it because I feel it right now in my heart Lord just the forgiveness that we don't deserve I don't deserve you Lord I don't deserve forgiveness I don't deserve the goodness the things that have happened to me over the last month I don't deserve them but yet they happened and I just I come to you humbly Lord to say thank you Lord, even if it were all taken away, I would serve you. No matter what happens to me, Lord, you are number one in my life. And even though the devil will throw things in my face, and, and sure, I can see where I haven't made you number one. I've maybe done this or that, Lord. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And help me to live right now, this second and this moment, forward. 100% for you. I can't change all the people around me, but Lord, I can be a, a witness to them. I can I can do what I do for you. And if they see that, maybe they'll be inspired and change. Lord, help it not to be me that inspires them, but you genuinely working through me. And as I share whatever I share, Lord, help it to be your words, not my words. Help it to come from you. Help it to come directly from heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, sorry, guys, if I get a little bit emotional, but it is emotional. Having a relationship with Jesus can be very intense and very emotional because he's so good and we're so bad. 
No, I don't mean that, you know, I'm out carousing around, drinking, smoking, doing drugs, cussing, hurting people, beating people up, whatever. You know, whatever the world does. But, Lord, but um, the Lord knows what's in our hearts. The Bible says that the heart of a man is desperately wicked deceitful above all things and when I share when I talk on a video I want it to be something meaningful something that could be a life changer for the viewer as my videos have gone out I've noticed my views going up to more than 30 million and I know another young man who's been sharing I won't mention his name, but he's got over 60 million. You know, that's that's profound. That could be planting seeds that could be really making a difference in people's lives. And uh, I want to share some things with you here because we're trying to do this program, weekly family program. I'm out here on this beautiful, beautiful, incredible property that the Lord helped me find through hiking and through a series of miracles. It's a property that's like none other. You can't even put words to describe and explain the idealness of this property, the location, the resources, the soil, the water. And it's practically untouched never had a garden in that beautiful loamy soil in the garden area no one has planted but no matter how many people i've showed for over 15 years since we bought it people are more interested in the city their jobs and doing what they're doing where they're doing it i've shared i've brought in one very nice couple um, a while back and sold them a percentage of the property and they live in the Bay Area um, <laughs> you guys know who you are I love you very much I'm out here by myself and you know I don't know what the Lord has in mind for this property but I want to say that I I believe God has a plan and I want to be a part of that plan and I say yes I just walked around the creek I just explored and hiked and ate I actually had my breakfast from the from the land I ate dandelion greens organ grape there's blackberries over here I see little maple leaves still that are delicious been eating some of those but I want to talk about this program that we committed to doing I'm out here, my, my wife is with her, she's with my mom, with our mom, with the baby. Um, I'm just trying to think of words. My brain is all over the place because, you know, can I just t talk openly, honestly? I, I can't plan this. I just want to talk and share. I'm out here with a man who walked out into the city of Russia with some sort of markings of the Ukrainian, maybe the Ukrainian flag, or he was not out necessarily protesting, but just the fact that he had some love and kindness towards Ukrainian people, he was beat up. He was a martyr, really. He escaped Russia seeked an asylum in the United States and he is my dear friend and I love this man he's a beautiful person and he loves nature and he's out here he's sleeping in because he just flew in from Hawaii he's been managing our projects in Hawaii the boat the um, Big Island mission and we're really blessed to have him it takes someone from Russia to actually bless our ministry everybody else is so busy 
you know, I'm not saying every, I did say everybody, I shouldn't say that, I'm sorry. All the people that we find are busy or not willing to commit or be a part. We're not asking for money, we're asking for people with, with muscles. You know, we need little things done, wood got in, a stove hooked up, a cabin built, um, hot tub, cold tub put in, a sauna building built. I'm taking care of my mother, our two-year-old. My wife can't drive. I'm managing ministries in many parts of the world. I'm involved with Bangladesh this last week, Pakistan, Philippines, of course, um, Romania. Hawaii, Ohio, people are suffering, people are dying. My heart aches for them and I wanna help. And I say, yes, I wanna do something. I come out here and I feel like I've, I'm in a heavenly place and it truly is a heavenly place. It's peaceful, it's beautiful. I wanna share it with people. It's a perfect place to go to have a retreat and just rest, enjoy what God has given us. Okay, I'm going to get back to our commitment for these weekly programs. Obviously, I can't do a weekly, I mean, I can't do a program with my family if they're not with me. They could not come out here this time. It is very difficult for my mother. In fact, it's getting very difficult taking care of her. She can't walk. We have to transfer her from the bed to the chair to the commode. She's completely incontinent. Please pray for her. She's having a very, very difficult time and we need your prayers. And it would be nice if we could find someone that would help us to sit with her sometimes. We want her to be involved in all the aspects of our life and enjoy life, even though she's very handicapped. The whole idea with these programs is that we wanna pray, we wanna to go to the foot of the cross, we wanna submit our wishes and our will to Christ, give our, our lives anew to him and then we want to share, simply share with you what God has done for us over that week. And really that's what I'm gonna do with you right now. I just don't have my family with me. Every day is so amazing. Let's just go over the highlights of some of the stuff. I'm gonna get this out there and I'm sorry that it's not with my family, but I'm gonna do the best I can to involve them next time and we're gonna keep trying and we're not gonna ever give up. Well, you heard about the miracle of the $26,000. This is not a gift, this is a loan and we are now praying earnestly that God would provide the resources to pay that off. They're not charging us interest and um, we're just overwhelmed. Really, I just, do you know how it is when things happen that are so good and you feel so unworthy and you just wanna give God your all again and again and again? And that's how I feel with some of these things that happen. What can I do for Jesus more than I'm already doing? <clears throat> I ate a lot of dandelion, so <clears throat> leaves are stuck in my throat. <clears throat> I remember this lady, we call her Miss G, she walked down the dock, she was asking for me, and someone said to her, oh, you mean that religious guy? And she later told me she was so proud of me that that's what I was known, known as. Well, religion is not what gets you to heaven, it's a relationship with him, but I know what she means. I understand what she means. Um, proud of me for 
that. Um, I prayed with a lot of people there on the dock and sometimes drunkards would come up to me and try to get me to drink and, you know, do whatever they're doing, smoking this or that. And I just put my arm around them and pray with them and, and they immediately <laughs> change their tune and usually walk away and they know that I'm a little bit different than them and some of the others around there. Um, the boat ministry, the Philippine ministry, this mission here in California, um, the other mission house down in Oroville. We actually still have a little mission project up in Paradise. And, wow, I mean, Ohio. My wife's never even been to Ohio, <laughs> to the mission there. There is such a need for people. We just don't have missionaries. There are just no missionaries. People, the world is really a mess, friends. People are so caught up in what they want to do and their life that they don't, they don't see the need to share the gospel. I read another glow track today that was just so touching. And I just wanted to take that track and share it thousands of them we have a thousand books right now national sunday law that i need to distribute and i'm trying to find someone to distribute them there is such a need and the workers are so few how is this going to how are we going to do this how can i do it by myself I go to bed, I wake up, I start again the next day. And I just wish that there were more people that could join us in this ministry. I don't mind joining you in your ministry. I love and support so many ministries. I love the Amazing Facts team. and um, There's so many. Talk about Voice of Prophecy. It was written. Quiet Hour. You know, I know this is a long, long talk. Sometimes it's hard to get right to the point, but I'm out here in the nature and I'm looking at the beauty and the trees and I'm seeing God's handiwork everywhere. And it's overwhelming to me, but I do want to share with you this last week some of the things that have happened that are miraculous besides this money. The motorhome, we're getting it ready to travel the U.S. with and come to your area. Please, um, you know, pray for us regarding that and that we would have a place to park it. Right now, we're allowed a month where it's at and I'm just working on it, getting it ready. Um, this, <laughs> I had this miracle happen where Ricky, and we pray for him. He's not here. We don't know what happened to him. His camp is here, but he's not here. So just keep praying for him. He's supposed to be caretaking our property. Committed to doing that. He's not here. It makes me very sad. But he wanted a camper. And right at the same time, that same day that he was talking about wanting a camper, um, the Lord just provided one for us. It's beautiful it's nice it's clean it's just wonderful it's a beautiful beautiful camper place to sleep little kitchen stove it is wonderful it is amazing and by the way we need someone to to stay in that we need a caretaker for this land and god provided us a beautiful beautiful amazing camper we need to rent a dozer Brothers and sisters, I don't know where to begin. It's not like the needs are so high that we can't wrap our, our head around it and you know, deal with it. It's, it's just that the blessings are so big, but there's always a need to, okay, we, we have this camper. Now we got to get it up here. It was given to us. It's a beautiful camper. And that was a miracle. It was advertised. I saw... I didn't even search for it. It just popped up on my Facebook right after that Ricky wanted one. And then 
I called, I didn't even offer them a price. They just said, for some reason, um, I feel like after praying, I think she said that I need to give you this. I didn't tell her to give it to me. I, I don't really know what, I just know it's Jesus. I know God is helping and I know that he's gonna help us get it here. So do I have to worry about that? No, I just have to do my part. The dozer that we desperately need to get as soon as possible for this place. I have to have a $10,000 deposit before I can even rent it. My son has been working at the place where they have these dozers for many, for a few years, many months, a year, a few years, I guess. Um, it's called I-5 Rentals. We need to rent a dozer. I'm the operator. I will be able to do everything I need to do here, including open the road in from the highway, including a big, huge parking lot for people to park, a turnaround driveway. We need places for people to park when they come out here. Um, we need a hot and cold tub. We need a sauna. This, these are things that just weigh on my heart so heavily and I pray earnestly day and night. And it's like people that I share this with, they're not hearing it. They're not understanding. I'm not trying to do something for myself. I'm trying to do something for the Lord here at this property. And I get so much negativity. People are always saying to me, well, no one's going to want to do anything there if it's not going to be theirs. Well, I do. I don't, I don't want this to be mine. I already proved that to the Lord by developing for almost 20 years of my life, not counting my childhood, a beautiful property in this same area with a creek, a different creek. And then I just signed the deed away and gave it to another ministry. I didn't want it for myself. I don't want this property for myself. But why is it so hard to get people to come together to develop a simple little, I believe it's going to happen. And I believe God has been training me over the years. And I believe that um, I don't know when I'm going to be ready, when I'm going to be worthy. But I know for one fact that I'm willing, I'm very willing. And... As I get older, I started doing this stuff when I was young, teens and 20s. I'm in my 50s. I'm feeling my body, you know, getting aging. But I know working out here, working in the, in the nature, it's definitely good for me. I'm just going to point the camera down the other way now for a minute. You can see the parking area. You can see, um, you know, vehicles here, motorhome, uh, trucks and stuff like that. And, yeah, it's, it's very comfortable and beautiful. And, but is it going to happen this year? Is it going to happen next year? We're set out for the next couple years. We want to pay off this $26,000 this, this year. And if we take 95% of our income, we can pay it off in a year. And that's what we're planning on doing. We don't want to focus on earning money with the assets that we have because you know money is not the answer to our problems and we don't want people that we're working with and helping to get the idea you know if we start charging them that it's about money it's not it's about their salvation it's about helping them turn their life around their health around their relationship with Jesus around so whether it's Ricky who flew the coop or someone else <laughs> sorry Ricky I'm I love you brother but uh, we really were relying on you and um, depending on you and you left and I'm up here to see you and bring you supplies and you're not here and you haven't even been communicating with us so I don't know where you're at but we're praying for you and we love you and so We've been so many places, we've been doing so many things, it's really, really hard. I think what I could do, I, I pray for me because I need to come up with a system, a method of reporting to you what's happening and how God is blessing and all the different little things that God is doing. 
you know, inch, little things. Like, why would he care about that? Because that's so insignificant and little, but you can see God working in the simplest little things of our life. And you just, you just know it's him. And if you're not a believer, how do we know it's him? Well, watch some of our stories and you'll see, you'll see what I'm talking about. Miracles that are little, but profoundly um, something that, for example, as humans, we have needs. And when you suddenly have your need taken care of, who else does that except for Jesus? I don't know. I certainly am not going to say it's myself or um, synchronicities or just random things that happen. No, God is looking down at us. He sees us. He knows our needs and he takes care of our needs. And sometimes if he delays, it's because he's teaching us a lesson because he loves us. He's our father. And if you have children, you know the need to sometimes teach lessons and teach patience. So I'm going to end this video soon. But um, I think one idea that I could do is I could just add a lot of the pictures together and then I can narrate over it, do a voiceover and share how God is working in our life. I'm going to take you down and show you. So these huge trees are here. Right up here, a little bit higher, there's a good cell phone signal. And if I had a dozer, I could make a big flat area and a turnaround. So I'm going to take you down to the creek here. There are rocks down here at the creek. And we could build a small pool. We could actually build a small pool here. Look at this. This is absolutely beautiful. The sun is coming out. Unbelievable. So, so beautiful. Amazing. 